a fiery rivalry, a nemesis with benefits, a race to get to the bottom, but stay on top. Here, best-selling romance author Lily Chu's newest Audible original, Drop Dead, starring Hamilton's breakout star Philippa Sue, alongside versatile funny man John Cho of Star Trek and Harold and Kumar fame. Filled with huge laughs, big twists, and sizzling banter throughout, Lily Chu's latest weaves together a scandalous mystery and slow burn romance to heart pounding effect. Unravel the secrets and watch the sparks fly as fellow fearless reporters Nadine and Wes embark on a fast paced adventure, chasing down the truth and stumbling upon something far deeper than either could have imagined. From the queen of swoon worthy moments herself, Lily Chu's Drop Dead is a hilarious and lust filled must listen. Listen now, go to audible.com slash drop dead. Again, go to audible.com slash drop dead. <laughs> Ladies, welcome to the Vile Files. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, this is a, a first time for us. We have one, cool two, three, four... Five, six. Good yep. counting, Nick. Ladies. Oh, seven, I can count. Yeah, seven no. ladies. Seven. Well, Nellie, <laughs> yeah. is ama- Nellie, Hello. Nellie is the vile files. True, true. But she's, she's, she's our girl Vi- now. She's Mrs. Vile she's, I'm part of mom talk. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Part of mom talk. Absolutely. Can you have a, someone outside of Utah? Um, I'm absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, what are, oh, yeah. That's a great place to start. How does one become a mom talk a mom influencer and you have to be mormon oh. just kidding <laughs> no serious you? question is everyone no mormon? no, no. You know, I'm I'm not, not, I'm, everyone has mormon roots me and jesse yeah. aren't yeah, yeah. we're the rebels but yeah. everyone has mormon sinners, roots though sinners. everyone Wait, you're not and that you're not mormon period. i thought no. you were part of the saints i don't know she is i think it depends on the day so do you have no mormon in you I grew up Mormon, so I haven't been practicing. The yeah, the Mormon roots. So you but grew I up in it. Yes. Okay. I haven't been active for like ten years. But we'll wait and see. I mean, no, I'll be converting. We're, we're all. working. Can <laughs> 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 so so I put the Mormon down? Are parents still in it, or did and you like exiled yourself? No. So I'm a I'm, former Catholic. Okay. Well, I, well, I'm oh, Catholic. Cool. I grew up very in a very Catholic household, yeah. so I relate to the. Uh, I feel like it's different for me. (laughs) 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 No, I grew up in California, so it's very different. Mormons in California are way different than Mormons in Utah. And so I grew up with my mom like cussing us out on the way to church (laughs) and she was a church leader. Okay. And in Utah, it's completely different. So I don't feel well, like I was ever that more. Well, for some people, <laughs> I was never by the book. Like we did, did things on Sunday. Did you end up back in Utah? Because my parents got divorced and then I moved to Utah with all my siblings and my mom. Okay. Yeah. Did she get back into the church? She, I don't know. I feel like it was a facade. Like maybe she acted like she was, but I don't feel like it was ever that important to her. I don't know. That's me speaking for her but all right so you hate god no, <laughs> Michaela no. hates god. Well, no. I'm, uh, you're not religious you're not part of it where no. when then where does this where's the spectrum continue who's the second least religious person in this i have zero out of ten on the mormon scale <laughs> okay i would say she's Are below you, Michaela. not to speak for you you're but bad Michaela falls yeah i'm the alcoholic on the show if you can't i don't follow any of the guidelines what do you mean you don't no, drink you don't smoke you don't swing that's why you're a saint swing yeah, but and you I got knocked, knocked up out of marriage. Like a, it's not a regular. Yeah, but practice. I'm not a big no. drinker, and it's not because I'm. Well, it's not their guidelines. It's not because of Saint Joseph or whatever. Yeah, Saint whatever. Joseph. What is it? what is your guy? What's his name? <laughs> Joseph Smith. Joseph Smith. Saint Joseph. Saint Joseph. Saint Joseph. Joseph. I love it. <laughs> He said, close Catholic, enough. He said, close enough. Yeah. 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 Sorry. I tried. So you're yeah. you're a bad Mormon. Yeah, right? I would say I'm like the rebellious one on the cast. My dad wasn't Mormon. My mom was. So I grew up like a mutt. So I have like a the best of both worlds, you know? <laughs> okay. So that's why you bring the flask yes. of vodka mm. to the parties. Yeah. <laughs> Creates waves. <laughs> Naughty, Naughty Mrs. Girl. Joseph Smith over yeah, there. Is. <laughs> How did you feel about that? Oh my gosh. All the feelings. I mean. <laughs> was was Zach's parents, was it more like Zach and Zach's parents or was it Yes, I'll be like, honest. I was more worried about Zach's family than I was about how I felt about the situation because it's not my house, you know, and I didn't want to like disrespect them and it falls back on me, not on them. So that was the thing that I was most worried about. But And did you grow up in the Mormon church? Yes, I grew up. Yeah, She's wearing her garment. This is our very Mormon. I'm not I just wasn't sure not. you got, like, got converted or something. <laughs> I'm trying my best. You know, it's so funny that in this group, I'm like the most LDS, but in my friend groups, I'm like the craziest. So like my own personal friend groups, okay. I'm the craziest. So it's very interesting to be like labeled the most Mormon in this group. I also have my past. 
<laughs> I, t- Taylor did say that, you know, you all kind of have your stories mm-hmm. and I don't know how much I don't think much of them w- was portrayed on the show. I feel like it was very focused on the Taylor swingers. and the swingers <laughs> and the arrest and Whitney being, a bitch. you know, not a very <laughs> good friend at all. Yes, thank you, bitch. Thank you, Michaela. And so what is, I mean, what is y'all's story? I guess we can start with you, Jen. Like, you know, how how did you get here? Where did you yeah. come from? So, yeah, I grew up in the Mormon faith and I actually grew up with foster kids my whole life. Um, I shared my bunk bed. Um, oh. Yeah, with. Wow. Children. We, we did meet your mom. On yes. The show. Yes. That's okay. right. Yes. Maria. We yes. love her. Yeah. yeah I uh, grew up with foster kids and I shared my bedroom. I shared my closet. I shared everything. And growing up, we were taught to teach these kids that, you know, we love them and God loved them. So they, when they left their home, that they knew that, you know, someone loved them. And it's so funny. Yes. You know, there are like pros and cons to being raised in like the Mormon faith. But for me, it was my relationship with God. And I always go back to that, even when like I doubt my faith. I'm like, oh, it's about my relationship with God. And it looks different for everyone. But yeah, so my my mom actually converted to the church when she was 25. She's from Ecuador. And she smoked, she drank, she did everything. And she came um, from a very dysfunctional family. And she saw like the Mormon families like in her neighborhood. And she's like, wait, I kind of want that. Like I kind of want like a strong family. So she converted to the church. She moved to America. She didn't know English. My dad knew Spanish because he served on uh, an LDS mission. They met. Wow. My mom became Mormon, had all of us, and the rest is history. (laughs) And then you're you're still very devout. Yes. I've had stages. Like I, um, after I graduated high school, I definitely left the church for a little bit. I drank. I had sex before I got married. I did all the Holy things shit. that Mormons don't do. <gasps> <Yes>. oh, <laughs> no, <laughs> for a Mormon, that's a big deal. No, like, yeah. you know, outside of the Mormon culture, like, like, sex like whatever, that's like the norm. Yes. That's yeah, that's the norm. But for me, I did everything. It was important for me to have that experience to not just like follow what everyone else was doing and to really figure out what I wanted. Yeah. And then ultimately I decided, you know what, like this does make me a better person and makes me happy. So that's kind of my okay. my journey. Oh, but. I love. Okay. And Demi, it is, it's Demi, not Demi. Demi, De, you said it the same way Demi. twice. Demi. 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 I heard Demi, not Demi. 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 Oh, it's Demi. Demi. It's Demi. Demi. No, it's Demi. 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 Yeah, Demi. Demi. My full name's Demetria. That usually helps people understand why it's not Demi versus Demi. Okay, is that like Russian? Greek. Oh, okay. yeah, our Greek goddess. Mm-hmm. Greek goddess. Uh, yes. Yeah, Taylor was telling that she said you had an incredible story. Oh, that's of sweet own. of her. That's so sweet of her. Yeah, I can go on and on and on and ramble, and she really I can. I'm like self conscious because I'll look at everyone and they're like, "Okay, we get it." I'll be like, "So in 2002, <laughs> <laughs> you're like, I woke like, up on a Wednesday morning." Yeah, they're yes. like, "Wrap it up." I'm a talker. I'm I'm all about the details, connection. I love, love it all, that. but I'll keep it short and sweet for the sake of the time and everything. But yeah, I grew up in a similar situation to Jesse, kind of like a not a broken, but like a half. My dad was not in the church. My mom was. And my mom was like towed the line beyond, which was like traumatizing in and of itself, especially with religion. You know how it goes. You know, it's already like you're in or you're out for most people. And it was like black and white. And then my dad came from like a long line of they didn't even know what religion was. So it was just such a stark contrast. So the faith aspect for me was like very interesting and intriguing because I almost like resented my mom for being like, no, you don't miss a Sunday. You don't miss young women's and like miss all these different activities that you do within the church and then my dad was just like a free spirit you know so naturally I'm more of like the free spirit so I always kind of went against the grain and that was like a struggle for me so finding like where I fit within the church has been such an interesting journey for me and I'm to a place where I'm just like okay what feels right to me what's authentic to me this is my journey I have one life like I want to make sure that I'm focused on my relationship with God that the people around me are good, the relationships that matter are good, and that's like the end of it for me. So as far as religion goes, I would say I've kind of stepped away from more of like the religious practices or the culture, if you will, and more just leaned into, okay, my savior and my relationship with God and how are my relationships, you know, in my inner circle. And that's kind of what I focused on. 
so yeah, there's a lot of in between that, but for the sake of time, I'll 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 save that. And if you have Hallelujah. any specific questions, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yes. and then where, where, yes. Layla and, and Macy, where do you stand in terms of how Mormon are you? Um, I don't know. Like, I'm active, so okay. I don't know. What does that mean? I, I go to church. <laughs> okay, I teach primary, so I teach like kids in church, okay. and then I have a temple recommend, which means that I'm worthy to go in the temple, which a lot of people don't believe, but that is the truth. <laughs> worthy, that sounds. I know, I'm worthy. Very worthy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. you have to be worthy yeah. <laughs> to enter in the house of the Lord, and you are. Wow. Yes. Oh hell yeah! I mean, I don't oh, follow oh, 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 Macy. <laughs> no, oh, no. Hey. Hey. A have they queen. seen have they seen your show <laughs> no oh, yeah and are you still worthy yes <laughs> i don't do anything yeah. bad on the show they should call you well, i don't know i mean next week. i, I say that as like I, you know i joke but i grew up very catholic but like what's different from where i sit to you know as a and i grew up in a very religious household so yeah. i grew up around like priests and nuns which yeah. is very different than like your normal catholic person like i think catholics are more like famous for being like catholic ish yeah it's like you're catholic because you mm -hmm. go to church on sunday and easter and i think there's a spectrum yep but i, I it seems like from afar catholics at least your average catholic doesn't have the intense mm -hmm. community that people in lds have or mormons mm -hmm. have yeah where, like there's Fair. like an entire city yep and it really it, it seems much of it almost seems more about the community than it mm -hmm. does the church. And it almost feels like there's an incentive to play ball in the church so that you are accepted in the community. Is, is that accurate? Because I, I, that's the vibe you get from afar. And I think that's the fascination with the show in terms of, you know, what do you guys have to do? How are you accepted? Is it, it's almost like Game of Thrones in, <laughs> inside your community <laughs> slash religion. Yeah. yeah. I were like, yeah. I don't know, man, I just had to go to confession. Like, fuck. Yeah. Like, yeah. And, yeah. And, yeah. and as a Catholic, it's a, it's a little less intense and it feels very intense um, in the LDS community. I think I, we well, talk yeah. about that all the time. Like, yeah. is it the actual Mormon guidelines or is it just the culture? Yeah, mm -hmm. I believe it's I the say. culture. And I grew up in California, so I'm a California Mormon. So I will say it's very different growing mm -hmm. up in California than moving to Utah and being in Utah. People can be a lot friendlier in the state of Utah, for sure. I remember when I was on campus at BYU, because I went to BYU, which is the Mormon school. Mm -hmm. I remember my first week there, there's people saying hi to me and I would like turn around and be like, who is this person talking to? But people are like very friendly. And so I was yeah. like, oh, so like Mormons here are very friendly, which is nice, but there is more judgment. It's like, oh, you, you drink coffee? Like you can't be yeah. worthy. But think about this. I do that. In confessional, it's one-on-one, -on -one, right? And when you're in the Mormon church, it's almost set up in a way for judgment to happen because if you're unworthy, you can't take the sacrament. So in your whole congregation, you have to like, pass the bread and water on and if you don't take it everyone's like oh my gosh so it's like a moment in yeah, church it is and everyone in your sacrament accept. sees you not take it so that creates the judgment wow you're like what is she fucking doing exactly. on saturday That's how <laughs> I, felt. Yeah. I will say they are moving a far from that though like yeah. it has yeah. been especially especially in utah and that's why i'm excited that we all have utah roots and that this light is being shined on the culture in utah specifically because you talk to a lot of members outside of utah and they're like you guys do what that happened to you, like, where, how, like, they fully think there's a Amish. weird <laughs> Utah culture that is yeah. specific to Utah. And yeah. that's why I think this is so interesting, the entire thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah for right. sure. Who in this room, if anyone, was in any way directly or indirectly part of the swinging group? Um, I was at the parties. <laughs> <laughs> Macy went to a party. Like, uh, uh, I'm like, you're at the parties. Right. I was at the parties, but you're I. You're a spectator. Um, we no. heard some watch. We oh. heard some watch. We heard some yes, watch. Were you a People spectator? did. You didn't watch any of it actually happen. I'm kidding. That was for shock factor. I was like, <laughs> you've been <laughs> lying. Like, no way. No, like, it is so crazy and no one believes me. But believe me when I say <laughs> we went to multiple parties and I had no clue what was going on. And that is so shocking coming from like one of the most observant people. Like I pick up on everything. <laughs> We had Macy's no. Like, I don't know. She, well, Wait, no. I mean, how did That's you? Not true. We weren't even invited to the parties, and you we had an no. inkling that they were swingers. I, like, I think they're swingers. And no, she's I had no. Party, when I was at know. the parties, I did oh, not but know is it that you were was going on. Yeah, I'm saying for someone who's ob as observant, like I sit back and I read the room, I like pick up on a lot of things and little nuances. It's shocking that I was actually at the parties and didn't know that that was going on behind closed doors. Granted, they never swung when we were at those parties. But weren't they leaving and, and like going upstairs and doing stuff? No. I thought that, you didn't no, get the that vibe that they were times. like, no, because you Ta out? Taylor's ex-husband came up to Brett and he was like, 
so are you like the jealous type? And Brett was like, I mean, I don't share if that's Brett's what you mean. He's, he's yeah. testing, testing the waters. Get- testing mm-hmm. the waters. And he was oh. like, well, I mean, I don't share if that's what you mean. My husband's six five, like Tate's probably barely six foot and he's a meaty guy. So I guarantee you at that point, he was like, okay, back off. Like he was like, well, I don't share if that's, you know, like kind of squared yeah, yeah. up a little bit. And so I think that they kind of knew right off the bat, like they're not down. And so anytime we went over, like we would drink and we would hang out and we would like mix and mingle, but nothing like that ever went down. And so when I tell you we had no clue, like when it all came out, I was just as surprised as everyone else. Like I had zero clue that anything was going on. Really? She did say that a lot of it happened at the after, after party. (laughs) Yes. I know, but it seemed like the party is when they would feel out the situation. (laughs) She had had an idea. I literally thought they were swingers before anything came out. I took Michaela and Whitney aside. I was like, I have this theory that they're (laughs) swingers, but you can't say anything because I don't want to start a rumor. And we were like, actually, the drama came out because I got invited by one of the husbands, not to swing, but like to go to a cabin party. (laughs) To swing. You were getting recruited. (laughs) I guess so. Wow. And And then got uninvited by the wife. Yeah, I got uninvited (laughs) without her uninviting me. It was like, oh, sorry. That's kind of a flex. She was like, no, no, no. we can't She's have She's like, her. sorry, there's nothing. Her ass is just too hot. Her ass is yeah, too hot. We'll not compete with that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah true, no. that ass. So I was like, they're for, after that happened, I was like, they're for sure swingers. And so when she said she's at the party and doesn't know, I'm like, how would you not know? I've never even been and I knew. Like, I had a feeling. I could feel it in my soul. It so makes it came you so, out, I was you were like, so innocent about it. You're like, oh, we're going to a cabin. Should I bring, like, my ski clothes? And they're yeah. like, oh, uh, lingerie. I was like, are we going <laughs> They're like, they're like, bring them. Yeah, I was like, are we going <laughs> sledding? And she's like, oh, it's not a part. It's not like that. I was like, okay. <laughs> she's like, actually, sorry, there's not enough beds. So you yeah. guys probably won't want to come. Yeah. <laughs> no, low key, not to make this super spiritual, but that kind of shows oh where gosh. you're so at and again. where I was at. Like, I was in a dark freaking place. Oh, maybe that's why you didn't notice the No, swinging. I'm not kidding. Like, I genuinely, like, I felt sick to my stomach going to the parties. I genuinely did. But I thought it was because it was just like we were drinking. I was like feeling off with Brett. His mom had just died and like there was a lot going on. And so mm-hmm. I just had so much going on. But kudos to you for picking up. on hey, so, this I mean, There's a lot of talk night. of yeah. like sinners and saints uh, on this show. Um, and you <sighs> seem to be part of the sinners. I mean, uh, I'm a divorcee. I feel like that's how we got lumped in. All okay. of us are divorced. Yeah. All the sinners. Uh, yeah, I wasn't sure how like serious <laughs> that, and that. And that's the, guy, that's the big fascination, I think, from people who watch Mormons from afar, which is like, like how intense are you guys? You know, because it seems to be like, um, and we have a, a large part of our audience is, uh, I think it kind of comes from my upbringing where, you know, whether you're Mormon or Catholic or Christian, there's just a lot of people who have left these respective faiths or religions mm-hmm. because yeah. of the judgment and shame centered around these. Mm-hmm. And it is fascinating to see people who don't quite leave kind of staying in it, but don't practice. And like the decisions that are made where you, I mean, you're, the way you're describing it is you were going to these parties not as a swinger, obviously, but as someone who felt accepted by a group that were also kind of participating in in non LDS behavior. Is that mm-hmm. almost how you found yourself going to these parties? Yeah, I would say just being in such a weird and dark place from being divorced and going through the blending of a family and all that I was going through. I was not in the best place spiritually, mentally, and Um, I think it was just kind of it it also was like work for me too, like in a sense. Like I was kind of building relationships as well. Like I had just joined Mom Talk and so she was inviting us to come and I was like, Well, this will be good for our work relationship as well. Mm -hmm. And then aside from that, of course, like my husband and I were participating in things that maybe we wouldn't have otherwise as as far as like drinking and not going to church as much, but that was more to do so with like my personal circumstances. Gotcha. But I do think that, uh, you know, there is a spectrum. There are people like people show up on Sunday hungover okay. and like that's where they're at, you know, and so. And they're allowed to go. Yeah. But I think yeah. And they're, sure, and they're yeah. still in our comments we judging us. Change, <laughs> I feel like the culture should change in that way because church isn't for perfect people. Church is for imperfect people and we go there to be it's better. And I think we've a lot of um, LDS people especially with culture, like I just think we have that mixed up. Like there's this expectation to be perfect, to show up perfect. And a lot of people just feel like, oh, because I'm not perfect, that means I don't belong there. And, but it's hard, right? Because mm-hmm. that's culturally in like- Ingrained. In, yes. Yeah. It's also in just us. human nature to just judge. I think it's human well, nature also, too. Yeah. From an outsider yeah. point of view, I get what you're saying that like, you know, church is for not just the perfect, but like 
I wouldn't go if I knew everyone was judging me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You know, I think when it comes to like Catholics, like you know, communion, yeah. you call this, you know, sacrament, like mm-hmm. technically you're not supposed to take communion if you've sinned, but like very few people, very like the most devout would actually not go and respect, but like your average Catholic, they're, st- they're still taking communion if they're out mm-hmm. late the night yes. before. Yeah. So there's no real like moment of judgment where it seems like, well, at your all's church, yeah. like there's like a oh, I guess I'll go to church and get fucking looked at all day long. <laughs> yeah. you know, like, that's why I love who signs Taylor up for that? because I mean, if Taylor can show up to church after everything she's been through after the swinging yeah. scandal, she was going right after the swing yeah. scandal. Yes, too. we can all go because, yeah. like, I mean, she, well, that's what I admire well, about her. She doesn't give an f. Well, that's the thing. I mean, things. you say that about Taylor, but like that that does require strength. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and it, it it requires uh, some guts and and whatever Taylor's doing seem, seemingly doing the work, but like not everyone has. That, that type of strength. It shouldn't be like that. <laughs> and, know. And that yeah. You know, right. I mean, like, you know, so for the people who would like to go to church are afraid of being judged and don't have that inner strength, like say people like Taylor have, like mm-hmm. how does someone like that feel accepted in your community? For sure. That's what I love well, in our comments. Yeah. There's like people that are saying, well, I would feel much more comfortable in a room of these women than yeah. all these Mormons yeah. in the comments that are judging them on We've been destroyed everything on that we're doing. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And hopefully it's opening up that conversation yeah. and well, creating that change. Like there needs to be change. That's why I'm personally so excited for this show. Mm-hmm. And there's so many are members. Are you uh, worthy? Uh, are you temple worthy? <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I don't know, Layla. I think you're I am, yeah. like a lot no. of your a lot of, and I'm not gonna like say that I'm super active. Like I try to go to church as much as I can, but I have sex before I'm married. I drink here and there, and I'm taking it day by day. And ultimately, just my relationship with God. I feel like that's what it comes down to, and that's just so personal. But if you were to put me on like a scale, I'm definitely not following things to a perfect T. But I show up when I can. And I think that. That's the most important thing. And how has your divorce um, been while being a part of the LDS community? And like, do you, is it been a struggle? Or have you feel supported by your friends? What is, what has that been like? I feel like my friends are all super supportive. And luckily half of these girls, like we mentioned, have gone through divorces. So I feel like a luckily, lot of yeah. just sympathy <laughs> luckily, from- Luckily all of them are divorced. <laughs> <laughs> all of us are going to be divorced soon. I'm just kidding. Um, Sorry, you're, jokes. Jess, you were, you were divorced? Yeah. Yes. D- Demi, Layla. Taylor. Yeah. No. Taylor. Okay. So yeah. four out of the eight. Yeah. And yeah. that's a no-no in our church. The yeah. sinners and the saints. You guys are just like, just like us. Yeah. yeah. Just like, <laughs> We're just like a little more scandalous. I know. <laughs> no, we really are. That's why I'm excited for this. I'm like, yeah. we are not much different than the rest no. of the world. We don't just churn butter all day and wear bonnets. The thing well, is, yes. we're normal. <laughs> There's a well, lot Whitney of members We bake and we twerk. Just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of members too that like don't follow things to a perfect T. And I just think it's honestly commendable that a lot of these girls were willing to admit that, hey, I've done this here and there. Mm-hmm. And like, I still do this here and there. And like, it's okay. Because there's so many members, especially being like a younger girl in this group. I can't even count on a hand how many people I know personally that don't follow everything to a perfect T, but they like to pretend and act like they do. And yeah. I think it's cool to just like be open and be like, yeah, like I've messed up and like, that's okay. Yeah. I yeah. feel like yeah. we're the perfect group for it because we have no shame and no, no. boundaries. Yeah, and so no. we're willing to have those uncomfortable <laughs> <have a> conversations. <laughs> we're, we're willing to have those uncomfortable conversations <laughs> well, that most people like won't. Like being a nervous shitter? Yeah. And- <laughs> oh, yeah. We're both uh, nervous shitters. We're like, yeah. oh, shit. Sure. She's, like, she's like, I I'm got like, the shit. I'm like, who like, oh, are you yeah. talking to? I'm like, why are you looking at me? Like, you know what I do in my free time. I'm like, oh, here we go. You know, you very much opened up. We are the nervous did. shitters. No, they did not. We 100 Always. What Before do you mean? we fly, we're both like Stop in the stomach. I'm like, my other. stomach hurts so Next bad. Next to each other, watch the show and be like, what did we do? On this is what I hate. Just like, n- not them. No, 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 no. You're just, like, this I is what I hate. No, just like, the fact that we haven't watched that and like, yes. we don't know no, what's going on. Like, why are you looking though. at me? Yeah, like, how do you know that? I literally show people pictures of like parasites. I was on Wikipedia. I'm like, what? Wikipedia. They move quick. They move quick these days. Shopify. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. Listen, if you are selling anything, if you have any type of business that uh, you sell your products online, you need to be working with Shopify. We are using Shopify here at NV Media, and you should be too. Whether you are a business of one or a business of one million, Shopify is perfect for your business. It grows with your business. Nobody does selling better than Shopify, home of the number one checkout on the planet. 
Their app is amazing. You can literally run your entire business from your phone. They have all these great plugin apps that really enhance your Shopify experience. Businesses that sell more sell with Shopify. So if you are growing your business, your commerce platform better be ready to sell whatever your customers are scrolling or strolling on the web in store or in feed and everywhere in between. Shopify, what's also great is they help boost conversions, you know, make sure that when people are shopping on your website or in your store, they're actually buying your product and Shopify goes a long way to make sure that is happening. Shopify is home of the number one checkout on the planet and the not so secret secret with ShopPay that boosts conversions up to 50%, meaning way less cards going abandoned and way more sales going. Literally, it actually goes to Ching on your phone when you make a sale with Shopify. It's actually kind of fun. So again, whatever stage your business is in, look at Shopify, a great customer facing website. It's really easy to make. You'd be surprised what you can do. You don't need a whole tech team to run Shopify. Nope. You just need Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month free trial at shopify.com slash V-I-A-L-L, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash V-I-A-L-L. Now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in, shopify.com slash V-I-A-L-L. Upgrade your business and get the same checkout we use for Vile Files merch. Hero Bread bakes delicious, low carb and zero carb bread and baked goods. Listen, if you are a bread girly, bread boy, just like I am. Love my bread. You got to check out Hero Bread. Just because it's summer doesn't mean you have to cut out all the carb-heavy foods that you love. Hero Bread reinvented the bread and buns that make summer great. Fluffy, delicious flavor and a texture with no net carbs, zero grams of sugar, and fewer calories, plus protein and fiber. And now you can get their sweet melt-in-your-mouth wine rolls for gluten-free summer sliders. All your favorites, no consequences, no compromise, zero to one grams of net carb, zero grams of sugar, and high in fiber. The delicious and flavorful, all of Hero Breads are awesome. Really great. You would think that you're like in France at some sort of bakery, fresh out at you know, five in the morning. It's delicious. It's fresh. It's Hero Bread. Mouth-watering, limited edition bakes like the popular two grams of net carbs Hero Croissants. Ooh, those are so delicious. Something for every craving, including sliced bread, loaves, buns, and tortillas. Delicious and flavorful. It's a soft, fluffy experience you love when enjoying a juicy hot dog, refreshing BLT, or mouth-watering cheeseburger. They have it all for you. Keep the carbs out of summer without compromising flavor with Hero Bread. Get 10% off your order at Hero.co and use code V-I-A-L-L at checkout. That's V-I-A-L-L at Hero.co, H-E-R-O dot C-O, Hero.co. Guilt-free summer sliders. Another thing that's very common in our society that obviously gets brought up a lot on this show is maybe the double standard when it comes to how society treats and perceives men versus women. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It seems to be extra amplified on this show. <laughs> Who are we looking at? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yay. Anyways, Jen, you're up. Uh, <laughs> unrelated. I, well, well, before we get to that, I, I was fascinated just, you guys are very open about just your faith and, and your lives. Was there a lot of nerves going in about how you would be received by your community? Because you guys do open up a lot of lights and you shine a lot of lights on your community. And I have to imagine there might be people in your community who might not appreciate that and yeah. would prefer <laughs> to live uh, a life where it's like, like, let's not out of sight, out of mind, out of yeah. sight, out of mind. Let's pretend this is how it is, even if in reality it's like this. Yeah. How yeah. did you guys? Not, how do you deal no, with that? Personally, how, how not so much, messages? not so much opening up and shining a light, but more so how it was going to be edited and portrayed. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. there was a few things like walking in the blue coats in front of our sacred temple. Yep. Those mm -hmm. things where we're like, how's that going to look? Like, but also we it's didn't actually realize very, while filming. Kind of a slight. That intro is cool. <laughs> it's, it's an like, absolute slight. It is. Like, yeah. it's it's crazy. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I did not feel that in the moment when we were holding well, hands. I was like, no. this is cultish. Like, no, it was giving yeah. Handmaid's Tale. I was like, are we getting red Kind of. Kind of. But more so from our community because there's people that are outside that are like, that's sick. But then there's things within the church and things that we participate in the temple that like are really sacred and that we hold like very seriously into a high standard that we're like crap what are they gonna think so there was a few of those moments mm -hmm. what was sure. the reaction from your parents the people who are who raised you in this community like jen what you know what did zach's oh. parents say what did your mom have to say no my parents were obsessed with the idea <laughs> they show my mom like you're gonna be the next kardashian no my parents were Pop all off. on board as for zach's family they were very um worried just of how they were going to portray us. Yeah. 
It's um, um they're on board been, now. But, they're but they're on board now <laughs> for sure. Yes. <laughs> Do they know what's coming? No. Okay. I don't even know what's coming. Yeah. Yeah. They're not going to be Are they really on board? <laughs> I was joking. <laughs> we are being well, sarcastic. They are well, let's, let's they just, are. Let's yeah. just be yeah. real. There is a several scenes uh, okay. where a lot of people in this room had a lot of very strong opinions mm-hmm. about your relationship yes. with Zach. Ooh. Yes. Which I don't blame them. You did. <laughs> yeah, either do I. Us. Um, and again, I know what it's like to be on reality TV. I know what it's like to uh, not be in love with the edit but it it it, it is hard I, I can't imagine zach blaming it on the edit so to speak no it was real yeah everything that happened was for the most part real him wanting to come to vegas was not real i i convinced him to go to vegas and he did not want to be a part of that but then he was put in a very tough situation and true How, what true do you mean colors. he was put into a tough situation oh just you know being in vegas and and being a the part motorcycle of that man. And, no, it yes. wasn't I more the gambling them, side of so things. Oh, are you and talking about that? Or what are we talking I don't about? I don't know what's shown. So yeah. that's what's really hard because I'm I'm speaking just yeah. off of my experience. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, it, yeah. it, 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 what was shown is that it sounds like Zach might may have a bit of a gambling problem. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, you guys went to Vegas. Yes. And then he used your money. Yes. Uh, that's right. To gamble. Yes. Um, all night. All night long. Oh, all night. And then tisk, tisk. you went. <gasps> I think the scene that we saw was incredibly relatable for a lot of women, I'll, regardless if you're Mormon or not. Mm-hmm. For sure. Um, to be put in a situation where, you know, you're trying to be a good friend. Maybe you find yourself in a situation that feels compromising, but you're doing everything you should and can do to protect your relationship. And then your partner finds out what's going on. And doesn't give a fuck about what they're doing, doesn't look in the mirror, doesn't ask themselves, could I be doing something differently or wrong? And then, well, I even hate how how crazy the, this word is misused in society, but gaslights the fuck out of you <laughs> into thinking that you did something wrong. And then to see you cry the way you were, it, you, I think it was yes. hard to watch yes. because it just, again, now, I mean, now, now he was watching it and being like, this reminds me of my ex-boyfriend. You know, it's just like, you said that too, Jesse. It triggered yeah. me for my <laughs> divorce. Yeah. I think Jesse, out of anyone, was ver- she was very triggered. By it is. It's just very. I don't blame you. It's <laughs> tough to watch. So yeah, I am curious where you guys are at now. And then it was even tougher to watch when a lot of the women speculated that you would come back and be like, everything's fine. We talked it out. We're all good now. In reality, we all know that maybe you weren't really good yet. But like, yes. how do you guys work through that? You know what? That's one of my toxic traits. And to be honest, I, just my toxic trait being that I like to pretend like everything's okay. And I don't like to just like acknowledge a lot of things mm-hmm. because it's just easier for me to just be like, yeah, no, everything's okay. Like we're okay. But that's why honestly being on the show is one of the greatest things that happened to our relationship because it a- actually made me take a step back and and look at a relationship for what it was. And at the time, I mean, you guys saw clearly I, a relationship was not healthy and there are a lot of things happening that I didn't even realize. And it wasn't till like, you know, being surrounded by these group of girls that I realized, wait, there are things that actually do need to change in our relationship. And wait, no, I'm... I, I'm not the one in the wrong here. And, and throughout the show, I definitely did feel like that. And I put a lot of um, that baggage on me. But yeah, after the show, I'll be honest. Like, yeah, I'll be completely honest. There, there was like a few moments where I was like, I don't know if I want to be in this relationship anymore. Like, I, no woman deserves to be spoken to that way but especially your wife and the mother of your children. And yeah, we definitely had to go to therapy. And for him, he also had to take a hard look in the mirror and ask himself, like, what what do I need to change about myself? And I mean, whether people believe it or not, like I do believe that he is changing and he's we've been doing nonstop therapy since like the show ended. And like for me, a lot of truth came out during that time. And I, I won't speak about it because it's his own personal sure. story and things that happened to him when he was younger. But that truth came out after the show as well. And now, obviously, our, our relationship isn't perfect. And now that he's in med school, it's definitely going to look like this mm-hmm. for a long time. But at least I know like where I stand. And if I need to, I have the option of walking away. 
I'm not walking away right now because I do love him. And there is a side that people haven't seen. And sure. I truly believe he's an amazing person. And, and maybe he didn't take accountability in, on the show, but he definitely did after. Um, and yeah, that's kind of where we're at. But I'm actually grateful because there is this like push in the LDS culture to look perfect. And that includes your relationship, your marriage, your family. So many people in the church struggle, just families in general struggle. And a lot of people hide that. And I don't want to hide that. I want to talk openly about my relationship and how we struggled because no relationship is perfect. No marriage is perfect. And for me, you know, this is a really tough topic. I mean, we're talking about gambling. We're talking about ga like gaslighting and, and all the, you know, uh, but also in, like in your situation, how it yeah. comes across, and I don't know if it's accurate, yeah. but it also like almost gender roles, like yes. in terms oh, of like for sure it is portrayed as if your relationship is very old school, very conservative, very kind of set in the old ways of the church, where Zach has afforded a lot of double standards and privileges and rights that seemingly you don't have in your relationship. Is that? Was that accurate? Is well, it still accurate? And is that something is, you guys are working there on? There is definitely a lot of that happening. Again, I didn't realize because okay. sometimes, well, especially for me, I got married at 20. I was so young. Sure. I didn't really know what I wanted. I didn't know, like, yeah, I just didn't know what I needed as well. And yeah, in the church, I definitely think traditionally uh, most marriages are, um, there are somewhat and maybe you guys can correct me if i'm wrong but mm -hmm. i do see a lot of gender roles just within the church but yeah and and i honestly started doubting my faith because of that because i'm like wait if they're pushing this i don't want to be a part of this yeah. because i want an equal partnership and that's my parents are the perfect example of that like my parents have a perfect like equal partnership yeah they fight but like They've always, you know, they've never, there's never been general. So I never was taught that, but I'm like, wait, is the church teaching this? And it wasn't until I took a step back and actually read the doctrine of what the church teaches that we don't actually believe that that's just what's been culturally pushed on wow. us. And according to the doctrine, we believe that we're, we are equal and that mm -hmm. if there's any abuse happening, like you will be accountable in the afterlife for that. And that is literally written in the family proclamation. That is what we believe in. Do a lot of people follow that? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I, and I mm -hmm. think it's because the culture gets mixed in with the yeah, actual true. doctrine of yeah. what we get but, taught. And then people get mixed. What? But women can't hold a priesthood, right? Um, still just no, but there's still no, something. No, that, we do. Yeah. Actually, uh, I can't really say these things. Not yeah, you in can't, the same we can't, way. You can't get too deep into it. Actually, I was talking to my mom about it yesterday. Yes. She's like, actually, you can. Like in certain situations, you can. If, get if you go to the temple and that, you'll things. realize it's. It's, uh, it's yeah. a. It's, it's, it's a whole you you're, not, you're not like worthy me. enough. I'm okay. not worthy to hear it's these things. Yeah, you're not worthy to learn in the things. temple. It's not secret. That you don't it's talk sacred. about outside of the temple. Okay. It's a little secret. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Why, um, what is that? Why it's just, is that? It's not secret, sacred. It's just yeah. things that you're just taught that, like, once you go through, it's some, there's just certain practices that you only discuss in the temple. Okay. Yeah. Well, during that whole fight with Zach, he threw a couple stones at your friends and mm -hmm. their relationship. Verbal, let's... Yeah, yeah. yeah. not physical stones. Yeah, Be no, clear. No, no, yeah. I was like, wait, is <laughs> yeah, I do. We're talking about church and yeah, Old yeah, Testament. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> verbal, the stone. verbal stones. Yes. Um, oh, yeah, we remember. We, I remember we know. That, like, remember I was there the night that those uh, texts yeah. were sent. That was pretty yes. heavy. You woke me Jessie up. woke us up at 2 a.m. She's like, guess what, guys? And she's like, I was shook to my core. I couldn't believe what I was reading. I didn't know if it was like he was playing into a role or like that's what I was hoping for yeah. I was like please dear God let this man be reading a script and like te yeah, texting as someone who knows that how <laughs> reality TV is made and I'm curious what you ladies think amongst yeah. each other yeah. but there's always like as soon as you so you get mic'd and cameras go on people yeah. sometimes play a role they think yeah. they should play yes. oh, 100%, as opposed sure. to just being themselves but the texts were sent off camera yeah, they were. So yeah. it, was, yeah. it was like nighttime. I didn't know if asleep. cameras were at his hotel, though. Like, I was just, a, I was trying oh. to give him the benefit of the doubt. I was like, please, yeah. dear God, I'm about to beat this man. Yeah. <laughs> please what say that this is coming from a producer or something. It wasn't. What did he mm -hmm. say about Unfortunately. you? Unfortunately. No. 
No. She's divorced. Um, I w- and married it was accurate. <laughs> yeah. divorced. Divorced and married oh. to a 50 year old. Yeah, that's what mine. I'm like, that's a flex. flex. Uh, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> no, my favorite. Like, green flag. <laughs> like, uh, try harder. Yeah. yeah. No, my favorite is she, he's like, my really divorce down while threatening divorce. I'm like, yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was, yeah. he kept saying that while also saying, I'm going to divorce you for being at this, this Chippendale show. And then, which I mean, she wasn't at. She, she didn't even go to the yet. show. Yeah, can't divorce you. Um, <laughs> she literally <laughs> left. He, <went. laughs> he needs you. <laughs> yes. yeah. uh, Jesse, he spread a rumor. He, oh. I mean, said that you stepped out on your marriage. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Check. I didn't know that. Did I? I did he say yeah. that in the text? What he said, you had an affair. Oh. On yeah. my old husband or my new? Well, you knew about the rumor. Old. This wasn't oh, new. Yeah. This was yeah. This okay. Was something oh, that you okay. Were like, Sorry, I thought you were saying like we're not telling you something it. you You're had like, in the you show. <laughs> Sorry. So yes, he said that there was a rumor about me and my past relationship. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I didn't know he had like even heard about that, but it's just Reddit stuff. Like people talk in our town, and that's a rumor that's out there. Everybody. Oh, where did he get all of his information? Is that on Reddit? Reddit? Yeah, he's a troll. He's on Reddit. All night night writing hate. (laughs) He's the redditor. He's the redditor. Have you guys made up with Zach? No, no, not not made up. But I feel like we're cordial when we see him. I think on the show I said I never want to be in the room with him him. again. And but we've been here this weekend, so yeah. I think ultimately we want Jen to be happy, and if that's with Zach then that's with Zach. But I don't think any of us would keep our mouth shut if we saw her getting treated poorly again. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I would yeah, definitely say something. Yeah. You're here. Don't he hurt He definitely my girl. looks the part of a villain with the whole blonde, long hair. <gasps> oh, <laughs> no. The man bun. Straight up. The Mormon the boy. Man <laughs> the Mormon he looks boy better now. He's cut his hair. He's cut I his hair. Say. That bun was oh, awful. He's cut his hair? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank God. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that hair Jen, was you needed to just cut that thing off when you were sleeping. Just kidding. Well, I mean, he was going through something. Yeah. Listen, I mean, he was definitely going through a lot. We also, we also did, in fairness to your husband, we only did saw glimpses of him. The glimpses we did see, obviously, uh, not it's flattering, but it yeah. is it is only just a fraction, I'm sure, of of everything. That being said, it, it, it you ladies came together. Yeah. yeah, you decided to make this show. What conversations did you have with your partners? Because it it kind of feels like they didn't. <laughs> really get the okay of what was really discussed and yeah. certainly they're not in the edit room yeah. yeah so how what conversations did you have with your partners going into the show what conversations have you had with your partners since recording yeah. and what conversations have you had with your partners now that we're about to have this uh drop because like every once in a while you guys bring in your husbands mm-hmm. into the conversations and that must at times be difficult to to deal with. I just want to see their what they're talking about. Do they have any like scenes of just the husbands yeah, talking? I feel like our husbands aren't even in it. They're not in it know. much to be clear. Yeah. But okay, good. listen, it yeah. is tough when you're not in it at all and everyone's yeah. your name gets thrown in as a part of a conversation mm-hmm. that, mm-hmm. you know, you quite, you know, technically didn't really sign up for. Yeah. Or yeah. or have they signed up for it being kind of full participants? And they well, just yeah. really make the edit. I, I think my, if we're making money, I'm like, I don't think you have yeah. anything to say. Okay. My husband's so go with the flow. I could literally do anything and he That's won't so care. True. Like yeah. he just is super yeah. supportive. So yeah. I think the problem is we went into the show not having those conversations. We just all were like, amazing. And then real situations happened on yeah. camera and we didn't know how to navigate that. So it just happened and they were unprepared. Well, I feel like as a group, we were in our group chat saying, hey, it has, make sure you talk to your husbands about boundaries. I feel like we had those conversations a yeah, lot. Yeah, but then some boundaries were just crossed as they were happening because you're put in these really unique one-off situations that you don't know is a boundary until you cross it. And then you mm-hmm. just have that conversation. After. We don't want to put Jen in the spot because we, we just did. Thank, not... Thanks for being such a good sport. But like, <laughs> do you, are any of you worried about I'm just going to keep it real. Nally and I often get asked from time to time, some production company will reach out and be like, have you guys ever thought about putting your entire lives on? uh, And I'm like, absolutely. I love my wife way too much. Like, I'm just like, you really have to be giving to to be it. You guys need the drama. Like, Mm -hmm. congratulations. Your show's awesome. We loved it. We burned through it all weekend. We were tapped in. It was great. It was also dramatic. and And that can cause problems in your relationships. Do any of you have a fear of surviving? No. This. How is mom no. going to survive? <laughs> I mean, I think I'm more so worried about our friendships, but my relationship specifically, yeah. I know. I think when you have a strong relationship and you're not exploiting it a ton, then you won't have those issues. Like, yeah. I feel like you probably never really saw, like, at least our no, husband. My husband doesn't give show. a shit. Actually, he doesn't want to be on to camera point, ever. I can't even visualize what they look like. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And, like, they were, my husband was like, I'll be in it whenever you need. Like, you just go with the flow. But, like, I wasn't like, let's bring him in. Let's bring up this yeah. issue. Because or, like, hey, we're, we're, not... ha- we're having a fight right now. Come film it. Like, yeah, I. Yeah, no, didn't, no, none of that. My yeah. husband 
it's not even in my TikToks. You wouldn't even know I'm married from looking at all my stuff. He doesn't, he doesn't even like talk being in, in anything. <laughs> what? The give me the money trend was the first time I've seen Jace money. speak in a TikTok before. Yeah. Yeah. Jace has a personality, you guys. He's actually really funny. He, funny. he actually is. I think my husband was like, I'm so down to do anything. Like, yeah. he's a very open book. Of course. He's like, I don't want to mess with our relationship. Yeah. He learned yes. from seeing. And to be honest, we're still seeing to this day fallout from filming with her relationship with Taylor's with Whitney and Connors, it's still affecting them. So my husband's like, I love you, I'm down, but this is staying solid. Yeah. yeah. Jordan is the one who made the call to Whitney's, to Connor, about <gasps> yes. the drama in Vegas. He did, yeah. Of course. He's, He's a little pot stirred. He's a little pot stirred. <laughs> yeah, he loves Jordan. Jordan. He's love churning Jordan. that butter. You know, you get the scenes going forward. Exactly. You know? We're making yeah, TV you here. <laughs> this podcast is sponsored by Daily Look, the number one highest rated premium personal style service for women. With Daily Look, you get your own dedicated personal stylist to curate a box of clothes based on your body, shape, preferences, and lifestyle. This is not an algorithm. These are real personal stylists. Nally loves Daily Look. Nally obviously has incredible style, but the good people at Daily Look are enhancing her style every day. Plus, Nally's really turned on all my sisters to Daily Look, and they absolutely love it. They are busy. They are out there. Some of them, you know, not as stylish as they wanted to be. But now with Daily Look, they are up in their game and you can too. Not only my sisters, plus also members of the household are locked in to Daily Look. With Daily Look, you get your own dedicated personal stylist to curate a box of clothes based on your body shape, preferences, and lifestyle. This is not an algorithm. These are real people. You get the same stylist every time. That means you can try up to 12 premium pieces per box in the comfort of your home saving you time and effort. So whether you need something effortlessly chic for a day at the office or just a cozy outfit for your everyday routine, Daily Look has you covered. How does it work? It's simple. Fill out their style quiz, including your price and lifestyle preferences. You get up to 12 hand-selected items delivered to your home, and then you buy what you love and send back the rest. It's that easy. It's that fun. And it's that great. And Daily Look offers free shipping both ways. It's that easy. Daily Look's mission is simple to elevate your style. That's why they work with both established brands and upcoming designers to make it awesome. Your box may feature names like Kate Spade, AG, Good American Girlfriend Collective, Spiritual Gangster, and more. And Daily Look has sizes for almost everybody from extra small to 3X to 0 to 24. They got it all. It's time to get your own personal stylist with Daily Look. Head to dailylook.com to take your style quiz. And use code V-I-A-L-L at for 50% off your order. Once again, that's dailylook.com. And make sure you use my promo code V-I-A-L-L so they know we sent you. Well, let's talk about ritual, people. When Nally was pregnant, the one thing that she didn't want to have to worry about was getting the key nutrients for our growing baby river. That's why she got ritual to ensure that uh, she was supported every step of the way of the pregnancy. And I'm just here to say, Nally had glowing reviews about Ritual. She took it every day during her pregnancy. It was by her side. She really felt like she was supported by the good people at Ritual because with Ritual, you know you're getting good and healthy nutrients in the vitamins that you're taking. Feel confident with Ritual's essentials for women prenatal multivitamin designed to deliver 12 key nutrients for pregnancy in just two daily capsules with vegan bioavailable and science-backed key nutrients. They have methylated folate and nature-identical choline support, baby neural tube development, omega-3 DH for brain and early vision development support from mom to baby, vitamin D to support fetal bone health. Also designed for helping with morning sickness, something Natalie really struggled with in the first trimester of her pregnancy and Ritual was there to help as well. Each capsule features a delayed release designed to help make it gentle on an empty stomach, which was super critical for Natalie. Every bottle includes a citrus essence tab so you can enjoy taking your multis. We are so thankful to have Ritual by our side during Natalie's pregnancy. And if you are pregnant or about to get pregnant, think of Ritual to help you along your journey because it was critical through Natalie's and ours. And we are so grateful that they were there. It's so important to know what you're putting in your body, especially when you're pregnant. And with Ritual's dedication to traceable science and sourcing, you always will. See for yourself with 25% off your first month for a limited time at ritual.com slash V-I-A-L-L. So other than Demi going as a spectator, none of you really participated <laughs> in the swinging. Although Taylor did say soft swinging, and I'll be honest, it just <laughs> seems, sounded like swinging. To me, I think, I think she started as soft. Yeah, it's because yeah. it wasn't like actual intercourse. I guess is why yeah. it's soft. They swinging. would do like first Everything base but. and second base, but they just wanted like straight gotcha. up hot sex. Well, yeah. Remember, they were about to, and then her husband was like, 
What are we doing? Only Regardless. Brown ads. It's the same so font weird. as soaking, honestly. <laughs> Which we, yeah. <laughs> soaking. Anyone Docking? ever tried Didn't that? Didn't do that. No. Uh, is that the same as derfing? No. What is that? No. Oh. Derfing is dry humping with your clothes on. That's what you do in high school when you're Mormon. <laughs> it's like a BYU thing. No, There's dry humping these... with your clothes on is called okay, high school. Well, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what people that's do at BYU. You guys aren't that special Mormons. Like, yeah, we... It's after high school too. No, but you, you know the soaking. You'd put it in, have someone jump on the bed. Someone so actually jumps that's on the docking. bed. That's oh, no. docking. Oh, no. docking? No. Docking is just putting it in. There's different variations. One is that you just stick it in, stay in, and then you pull it out. You don't move. One, another one, next level, is that you have someone come jump on your bed so that you're not actually the one making the thrust. And the premise is, if you're not actually thrusting the hips, <laughs> yeah. you're not having sex. Yeah, apparently. They forgot that it's just genitals touching and then you're having sex, you know? There's a lot of <laughs> BYU slang to get around the rules. There's like like soaking, docking, gazing, yeah. derfing. Yeah, there's a lot of things. We should have done that Well, instead. the BYU honor code, you know about that, right? No. Oh, oh yeah, my God. it's major. Yeah. It's, it's major. Huge. Nick would be kicked out because of his beard. Yeah. What? Yeah. That, major. Zach couldn't have long hair. I didn't like, know that. He was that. having to tuck it. And like, if you have a boy yeah. over to your dorm, the door has to be open and you have to have like your feet on the ground. So you like, can't sit on the bed like with your feet dangling off. Like you have to have feet on the ground, like what stuff like hell? that. Oh, yeah. like major athletes were getting kicked off the team. Scholarships lost from like messing up with a girl. With people telling each other. For sure. Yeah. I mean, I feel like my husband was on the BYU football team. And he's like, yeah, there was a bit of a pact, you know, but it's just such double standards. Like he's he's just like you see like the double standard, especially being an athlete, because you see people getting away with things because they are an athlete. Okay. And then you see other people. Well, not. I, I will say from being an athlete at a BYU, the athletes will get away with more. Right. Mm -hmm. Football will get away with the most because yeah. they're the they're generating revenue for the, the school. Golden right. Child. So they're the golden children of the school. So they're going to mm -hmm. get away with a lot more than someone who's like on a swim team, on a tennis team like me or whatever, because they're making money for the school. You know, yeah. to me, Crazy. what is <sighs> the criticism around your age gap as someone who gets, <laughs> I'm sure. The same. Everyone just thinks that I'm like not making a decision to be with my husband. That's yeah. They're like, oh, my God, like, you literally she know? can't speak. Her. You can't do anything yeah. like he's grooming you. You're like, yes. you're you're in the womb still you're still a toddler like a baby it's exactly like, yeah grown women a lot of that of just like they think that it's inappropriate and that i'm not choosing to be in a relationship with him and that i somehow need to be saved <laughs> i get oh, a wow. lot of that yeah oh, wow yeah which so is like the wild. complete opposite because they're literally almost too obsessed with each other they yeah. can't go apart for like two minutes <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh, it's, they are. yeah so it's wild do you get that as well Oh, yeah. I got like child bride. Yeah. I got. Yeah. I <laughs> You've got a lot it of all. It. Yeah. A it's lot of it. Crazy. I did not expect that at all. It's the Internet, you know. Yeah. yeah. You got oh, married yeah. at 20 and you originally got married. 20. 20. 23. 23. 18. 18. 22. 22. 19. 19. I mean, and obviously we've discussed the divorce, but mm -hmm. clearly I think the fascination with the swinging scandal is here you have a religion seemingly not forcing but pressuring people into very early relationships you know long before we see especially in 2024 it's just like what do we i don't even know what i want to do with my life i'm, I'm supposed mm -hmm. to get married if you're not swinging and assuming you're in a good relationship how do you keep the relationship hot and spicy and fun and new and interesting <laughs> dancing uh, don't have kids right away <laughs> ketamine Ketamine. <laughs> Love ketamine. It has been like the biggest tool that I've used to strengthen my relationship. Next level. Everyone I talk to, I'm like, they're like, we're kind of struggling. Things are getting a little bit like dull. Ketamine. Go do ketamine with okay, your spouse. Can you say more? Wait, what? Yeah, yeah. please. <laughs> um, so I'm not talking popping special K. Um, what the hell? Administered by a doctor. Okay. Through an IV. Is this like um, a microdosing situation? Yeah. It, yeah. It's, it's microdosing. Like a horse tranquilizer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They use it for um. Use a it disclaimer: to... We're not doctors here, yeah. so yeah. do whatever the fuck you want, yeah. listening. But anyways, to me, yeah. <laughs> to me, I'm always the controversial Kennedy. one. Yeah. The Mormon hippie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, my husband literally was like, "Are you with me?" He's like, "Can you t ask her about ketamine?" Or he was saying like yeah. DMT or DMT. yeah. DMT. They always come to me for all these kinds of questions for uh, all the drugs. No, it's like a it's the safest form of anesthesia. They use it on kids, animals, small animals. To and put what them down. does it do? It takes you out of your conscious state. And you're able to kind of let down your, like, really just diminish your pride, let down all the walls, and be able to, like, speak heart to heart. Like, I've never had deeper conversations in my entire life. Is it used in therapy? 
Yeah. 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 She said, did you. you do it with the therapist in the room one time or someone? Yeah, something? I've done it. Um, I prefer to do it with Brett. Like mm-hmm. we, I have him in the room. He's not on ketamine. I am on ketamine and we kind of like talk through our stuff. She's done it. It's been so interesting because Demi tells me about her experiences with it. She's like, I found out why I got divorced. I'm a whole new person. I'm like, I was like a cartoon character floating in the clouds. <laughs> yes. There was that too. <laughs> like I was an avatar like with a tail. You, like, you, you need to do about? more. You need to do more. You need to get deeper. You're protecting deeper. yourself. It was a yeah. good time though. I like yeah. was so happy after. I went to Cheesecake. Had a little <laughs> sexy time after. I was in a great yeah, mood. Yeah, you know? yeah, that's good. Every but it's time. good for your sex life. It was actually. Yeah, yeah, yes. yes. It does spice up your sex life yes. for sure. I definitely want to do it. Okay. So we ketamine is one option. Okay, ketamine, one option is yeah, what else? Toys. Oh, well, well, yes. We did get introduced to some toys on the show. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. Mean, Are you as empowered as Whitney when you use toys? Or? Oh, <laughs> I was like, oh, is she yeah. intense about it? it? She, there's a scene where she, she wants to do an ad and she just says how empowered she is 50 oh. fucking times. Oh, oh no, <laughs> no. Do you guys yeah, have some um, feelings about Whitney? I'm feeling some well, hostility. Listen, again, we, the show does not paint her in the she best. gives regina george that she true. does give regina okay. george she gives like must be leader of the group but also yeah. like to get close to michaela she's gonna like tell michaela that everyone else in the group talks shit about her and mm-hmm. she's the only one who never has to like mm-hmm. yeah. you know kind of was the vibe mm-hmm. she was giving. preaching to the choir yeah. so she's a manipulator we we only saw a we show we don't know her we don't yeah. know her she could be lovely but she comes across to me is an energy vampire. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 100%. There you go. You guys uh, read it right. That's all you need to say. I can picture Whitney like coming to you. You barely know her. Maybe you just met. It's your first weekend hanging out. And she'll like be like, eventually, if you need to bury a body, I'll help you. And you're thinking, we just met. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. And she only says that because what she wants to know is if you would actually help her bury a body. Mm. Uh, that's the vibe I get from Whitney. That mm-hmm. is really good. I'm you impressed. Nail on the head right there. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot of what feels like tests. You know, it's a lot of like, well, I did this to see if anyone would react and no one reacted. I left so. the group chat for the fifth yes. time and she no left. one chased me this yeah. time. Yeah, it's like, yeah. what is that? I don't, yeah. like, also, the elephant in the room. She's the only one not in the room. Yeah. But yeah. she's also here and then I hear she was blaming it on being pregnant but like she's twice. She's always she the know? victim. Like, There's she, always an excuse. It's self-serving. Why is she here? Do we know? I don't know. I haven't talked to her. I think she was having some hard time with press that we did last week with certain questions. I'm not speaking for her, but that's my assumption and why she didn't want to do it. I think Whitney genuinely doesn't realize she is, quote unquote, the villain. I think she was surprised to find that out during our media tour. Well, I was surprised to find out from Taylor that it was, in fact, Whitney who reached out to Taylor after her arrest. Yeah, Yeah, that's that terrible situation. But I don't think that was like a genuine thing. Listening more, I thought to myself, well, that seemed nice, but like, did Whitney reach out to Taylor because deep down she thought, I'll bring in Taylor and then Taylor will be the villain of yes. our season. You're good. And I won't be the villain of the season. It's like he was there. And <laughs> you just... are good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because the first half of our filming, she was ragging on Taylor and was trying to paint her in this light. And mm-hmm. then all of a sudden it kind of switched and I don't think she realized she kind of created that. Yeah. Spot on. Nick. Where no, do we real. stand with Whitney today? Well, this room probably speaks for that. She's not here. Well, there's a couple of people. I was about to say, Macy, you're closest with her, Yeah, right? Macy, you're close with we're her. We're still friends. Okay. okay. But we're not as close as we were, obviously, as you saw probably on the show with certain things Yeah, she happened. really left a, left a hang in there. Yeah, she did. So that was kind of disappointing because I'm like, yeah. I literally backed you up through everything, like the whole time. Like, and it was like, I was in a position where I was like in between two groups and it was like the worst feeling. And then at the end of the day, the only thing you could have done to support me was to show up to my event or even send me a text or a call. But that she did crazy. nothing. Yeah. She didn't post an her Instagram story. Sent, she didn't call her me. Her husband texted me. Though. Yeah, her husband texted my husband say, tell Macy congrats. Congrats on I'm the like, launch. Why, why couldn't you text me? Especially because that is her big thing of yeah. like reaching out to people. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So. and that's the thing. She's clearly too smart to be stupid. My husband always <laughs> says, you guys were playing checkers and she was playing chess. Like, mm-hmm. he thinks that she's calculated, but I can't figure it out. I'm like, is this how she is or was it a plan? No, I think she's she knows what she's doing it, to an extent. It's not that she's smarter than us, but that's I don't think that's what you're saying. Yeah, I'm not saying I she's smart, but she's, yeah. not, she's not stupid. Yeah. And so yeah. I don't think you can blame her behavior on not knowing better. No, no. she knows better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She knows what she's doing. She's I don't a grown think she does, doing. though. I truly think she's just delusional. No, Mm-mm. she's a grown I, woman. I, like, I you know. have to have common sense eventually check in. Like, mm-hmm. she can't just keep making it excuses for poor behavior i mean i haven't met her but i've met people like her i think two things can be true 
I think she can be smart and calculated and self-aware, and I think she can be delusional about how it all comes across. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, she okay, thought she agreed. was going to be the victim, I think. Like, we all turned on her. We're mean girls. And I don't think she realized the narrative was maybe the other way. Well, yeah, mm -hmm. because also, like, again, again, she's just like, I didn't do anything. Meanwhile, she's planting seeds, talking shit. Mm -hmm. every, yeah. Everything's one on one. Yeah. And she's all expecting it's... it to come together. Okay, but doesn't the villain always come out on top? That's why I feel like she is playing chess in the sense that I feel like she almost wanted the villain. No, I don't, she didn't. No, if she's crying no. in every single interview that calls then her the villain, I don't think. why does she keep coming that. back and doing the same thing, though? <laughs> Well, we went on a podcast. She wants to be in control. So she's like, oh, they think I'm the villain. Okay, I want to be in control of the situation. So yeah, I'm the villain. Oh, I was going to say, we went on a podcast together last time I was in LA a few weeks ago. And this guy, I was like, oh, I thought Taylor was going to be the villain at the start of the show. And then it turned out she wasn't. And Whitney's like, well, who was it? And he's like, didn't say anything. Delusional. And I was like, it's you, Whitney. And she was like shocked and she was like upset. Like she's been really upset to know that she's the villain. I think it's so a I don't think she she's an actress. You think it's a facade. No. Well, I'll tell you right now, if she's that smart. The only way it's a facade. Well, maybe she just doesn't realize. But if do you think she's done with you all? No, no, I think she, she is eating up okay. the spotlight because right like now. the villain comes out on top in the long game. Because exactly, and we've seen enough people go through reality TV to know that. That's why I'm saying, guys, come on, give her some credit. She knows what she's doing. She knows exactly what she's doing, and she's going in to be an actress. You think she's not good at doing that and like yeah. playing the part? She's not. She is. Well, how she's been she reacting like the past not. like two she weeks is. since the show trailer came out she's been loving the attention she's been so active on social media yep. which she wasn't for a while she's loving the attention i'll die on that hill this was all premeditated she definitely doesn't think you guys can survive without her mom talk <laughs> yeah we here would be we are yeah. our real friend group we forget she's a part of it <laughs> genuinely Parting we word. forget she's like on the show i do jump scare every time she shows up to <laughs> content days i'm like whoo you really hate her. I don't hate her. I don't <laughs> respect the inconsistency that scares me mm -hmm. that and the lack of accountability me. and like yeah, and and acting like, huh? The, people don't want me in the group chat. You left the group chat. Multiple what do times. you mean? <laughs> you want us to chase you? Yeah, I, you. I'm not gonna play the game. It's so grade school to me. I'm I I don't respect her. Mm -hmm. I don't dislike her. I don't have that much energy to give to her. I don't respect her process. And she all. hasn't apologized to anybody. No. One. Is that what it would take? Like, what would it take? Oh for no, I would never be friends with her again. Like, really? Because yeah. I was the best of friends with her and Macy, and so I would never. Never. What do you feel like she did to you? I feel like that... she could apologize, but I don't think I would ever be the same friends. Like I could be cordial. Now I'm not even really cordial. That's just that just says you don't believe that she'll change. Yeah. Oh no. no. I know she won't change. Basically. Wow. <laughs> You've been quiet. I know you have feelings you just expressed for Whitney, but if, mm -hmm. if we have Whitney if these ladies have Whitney wrong, how would they have her wrong? I mean, I don't know if she would have done all what you're saying. I don't know. I think it's because I always like to believe that people have good intentions. I love to give everyone the benefit of the doubt. And that's kind of probably my fault to a T. And so in my head, I'm like, no, like I know Whitney, like I don't think she would do that. I think that she did certain things for the plot and we started filming. It backfired. And then she was like, oh, shit. And then she was stuck in this thing. And then she's like, everyone's being mean. And so, I mean, I did call her out multiple times, even off camera being like, hey, you're being really impulsive. You did this. Um, you knew you're going to have backlash and for this. And she manipulated her by saying, oh, my gosh, you're so right. Yeah, you're right. I want to change this. And then does the same does thing the over again. Thing. Like, Macy, I think show. you're amazing. But we also need to remember that we saw these patterns before even filming. Yeah. No, she did it all the time. Remember, she talked crap about me and then a week later text me and invite me to things with you guys. She does it all the time. I think she talks shit on she Taylor all the bad. time. And then is like, like when we were coming to California and she's like, no, we don't have to invite Taylor. And then she's like, oh, God, but guys, I invited Taylor just because she wants to be the one she that's wants in to be control the one. of every situation and be that person that's like, oh, Whitney's my number one. I would love to see Nick talk to her because I think you could like really we would have loved to. We, we, we would have loved we, to have her, yeah. but uh, she didn't want it. it is it is shady that she's in L.A. and she is not here. And like, she's what is she clearly doing right separating herself from y'all. Yes. She has a plan. Don't yeah. know what it is. But she clearly has one. Yeah, yep, she does. She does. We're yeah. ready, though, for her. It's a self-serving I'm like, I don't want to be involved in this. <laughs> Macy's too nice, and I love her so much. But I'm like, what do you have to hold on to in your I don't know. I'm just a loyal friend. Even if we're, like, not good friends anymore, I usually try not to talk shit on them. Yeah, that's I, a good quality. But if someone yeah. really crosses me, then they're, like, dead I know, to me. but you so said like, that she, you said it would be over if she didn't come to your event, and then she didn't come to your well, event. Well, we're not, like, good friends anymore, though. I'm not, like, But you still give her the benefit of the doubt. 
and defend her. She leaves you at the airport in California and hops on the plane without you. And Wait, what happened? She literally left that was you, two weeks Macy. Ago. <laughs> she right. left you? In the airport. So we had yeah. a flight. We were doing press and then we got to the airport and I had TSA pre, so she's like, oh, I'm going to get in line because I don't have it. And I went to check my bag, but we only had 40 minutes to the plane took off. So like, you can't get on, like you can't check your bag. And so I told her and she's like, oh, I'm still going to try to get on. And I was like, she's cutting people in the security like, okay. line to get yeah, and so on I the guess plane. She like, because I was like, oh, we could just stand LA together, have another day here, like go shop, like do something fun. And she was like, oh, I'm going to try to get on. And so she like, just got on and left me. And I was stuck at LAX for seven hours because I would have just stayed the night and went to a hotel at a fun day. Yeah. But then I had to stay at the airport because I'm like, who am I going to hang out with? No, was, I just want to say a not a single salty. one of these women in the room would do the but same thing. But I wouldn't thing. do it to anyone in here. So that's why I was like, that's yeah. kind of shitty. But I told her about it in an interview and she was like, oh, I didn't know I was like, but how would you of not course. know? Like, you literally because she does me, whatever. She I think knows. She's just kind of used to being queen B. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think she's just kind of right now, especially she's, she's kind of in her own little world. Like, she's pregnant. She's really focused on her family and stuff. So like, that's good. But like, I don't think she's really aware of anyone. She doesn't have group. anything else, le any more going on than the rest of us. She's know. not that important in her homestead. I've never seen a situation <laughs> where I mean, obviously, her situation <laughs> with her husband was a very difficult story to tell. Yeah, and she told it, and then I've never seen a situation where someone was upset that someone else took the spotlight off yeah yeah a terrible situation yeah. or someone she... was getting more grace from the internet well, on her, their situation or it's like taylor's just like yeah i got this thing going on and then yeah. yeah it's like whitney meanwhile all of y'all were like shifted the because it could have gone pretty bad you know you, you could have been very judgmental of whitney's husband critical we uh, love connor i mean yeah you did not give Connor the same treatment you gave Zach. You know what I'm saying? And I felt, you know, seriously, I'll, it also, I'll just aside, that was a hard moment as all these ladies, whether I agree with them or not, were coming at you, yeah. being like, your husband's a fucking narcissist. By the way, do you think he's a narcissist? Um, I think he does have some narcissistic traits. Okay, well, that's a very traits. honest thing to say. Anyways, hard <laughs> moment for you to take that meeting, and yet you women could have done that with, with Connor. She would have loved and that. And she was like <laughs> mad that you guys didn't. Yes. And I thought that was just really a bizarre behavior. Yeah. We have more context be. with yeah. how Whitney's been. Yes. And it was a different situation. Yeah. Whitney's hard to deal with. She's very hard to deal with. And I'm not condoning what Connor did. Like, that was wrong. But such a different situation. Mm -hmm. And I think the approach with Connor was different. Like, he owned up to things. I'm not saying that Zach didn't. But the way he handled his, the situation was very much different. Than, Taking like, accountability. Yes. Very, yeah. like, he was very Connor's upset. Very, very sad. Respectful. Very humble. Like, very, like... You know, oh, it was just a different situation. I mean, I, it was like episode two yeah. and he's out there just, I don't even know this guy. And he's just laying it all out there. We what did my him. husband say last we night to me? Him. My husband was like, if I was married to Whitney, I would still have Tinder and not delete it. I was like, oh my gosh. <gasps> yeah, Jordan, Jordan said that, of Except there is that one, there was that one scene when he came in with like the slick hair and the gold chain. Oh. Remember that? Yeah. Who? And I was like, and is Nick he back, like, on, he's back on Tinder? He's back on Tinder. He's back. <laughs> like, <laughs> hey, he had a mullet at dinner last night, so maybe he's back on. Yeah. No, we love Connor. We do he love Connor. Yeah. He's, he's really, a good, he's he's a really guy. good guy. Best, I only best have one last question when it comes to Whitney, and we can move on. Where does she get her style inspiration? Um, Lord knows. Ballerina the pioneers. And the <laughs> pioneers, our, our ancestors. Can we talk about no. the prison yes. flip-flops? She needs to throw those things away yeah, and the burn stompers. them. No, yeah. Whitney has a new um, vibe every six months. So this was her vibe during filming. Before it, it was like slutty 90s. Like she has a new personality. Every but six listen, everyone's trying to figure out their own style. I don't think it matters. Whitney Here hasn't always had, but oh, she hasn't always. always had the best style. <laughs> we all change it up. But there was one time we went to yeah. film. She was wearing kind of like a croc shoe. She's yes, like, should I wear socks. the strawberry fuzzy socks? I was like, please don't. It was the first day of filming. It was the first like, day. I'm the one, I'm able to tell her. So I'm like, don't wear those shoes, please. Like, don't do that. And she'll usually listen. That day she didn't, but I think that got cut anyway. Maybe this is part of her plan. Maybe she just wants you all getting in a room talking shit and she could be like, listen, they're all mean girls. She's not that smart. She's really not. I think she is. She just digs herself holes and doesn't know how to get out. And then at the end of the day, she's like, wants to be in control of the situation. It's like, oh yeah, I did that. Yeah. It's not that it takes intelligence to be a villain though. Like it doesn't take that much intelligence. I think that's just how she is. I think that's just... I know I don't think it was is, her intention to be the villain. No, no I don't Nick, think it was. Her intention was to be the queen of mom talking for everyone to love her and be everyone's number one. Right. It was not to be the villain. 
agreed but very quickly when things shifted i think it was like especially when we were all talking about yeah. how that's who rises to the top we did talk about it and then that's kind yeah. of how it played we out about no. it. well before leading into we would just you know we did our research on reality tv stars and people talking about oh, it and jesse would send us videos of people who yeah. had been on like selling Podcast. sunsets and podcasts and stuff and they're talking about how being the villain you are more recognizable and i said like, and, like we need to avoid this we need to stick together and i think she took it and was like "Ooh." if you're the villain you're one of the main characters Okay, I have a question for, sure. for you. In your reality TV experience, were you ever kind of like the villain? I guess. What was your experience with that? Did you go into that intentionally trying? No. Okay. I mean, the, being on The Bachelor and a competition love story is very different True. than what you ladies so did. Different. I definitely wasn't trying. It wasn't a fun experience. Okay. Uh, I'm grateful that I started out that way because it gave me a lot of perspective and a lot of the mental health struggles a lot of my peers have often come from coming onto the scene as a star they get a lot of attention they get a lot of love and then eventually fans get bored and they find something to criticize you with and yeah. they and i was you know i came into you know everyone fucking hating me so as soon as i got like a little bit of love i was like hell yeah you know it's just <laughs> like, the um, so it gave you it gave me a little perspective but it wasn't fun and i don't if i had to guess not knowing whitney that i don't think she planned it she doesn't strike me as someone who's prepared to take that type of heat. She could barely take it from y'all. Yeah. I think she's smart enough to maybe try to make the most of it going forward. I doubt she went in being like, I, I think she thought she was going to make Taylor the villain. Yes. And it I didn't agree. work yeah. out for her. And I, I could see that starting out that way, but I think when it turned, she leaned into it. I should say, I should say, it's crazy to think that. that Whitney was the one who reached out to Taylor mm -hmm. to hear other side of the story, only for us to watch the beginning where it's like Whitney being like, Taylor. Fuck Taylor. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. you know, yeah. literally. It's just, yeah. it yeah. seemed like, Oh, I'm fine. okay. Well, she came in with an agenda. Like our first yeah. scene filming with Whitney as a group, she was like, Fuck this, fuck that. Taylor sucks. And I was like, What? Like it felt like she had that planned for sure. But I think she had resentment for Taylor. I think like but she is like, totally not warranted. Story didn't even again, it, she it came to the attention thing. And it's funny because I'm friends with Whitney and Taylor. And when Whitney didn't like Taylor, I was like also friends with Taylor. So I was like, you don't like her, but there's no real reason. I was like, you're resenting her for the fact that she talked about her Connor thing when she interrupted the miscarriage. Right. Mm -hmm. And then there was also the other thing of her just like getting more attention. Right. And Whitney or Taylor gets more attention. And I think it was more of a jealousy resentment yes. thing than anything. And once they finally talked, mm -hmm. it was like, oh, I love Taylor. Which I was like, I told you. I told you. Volumes. I mean, I would never, you know, wish hate uh, on Whitney. I, I think this might be a hard run for her. Um, just from my experience with the Internet and how the Internet works. Macy, I do hate that she hasn't been a good friend to you and you continue to still be a great friend to her. Macy's Is that best. just who you are as a person? You're just a uh, ride or die no matter what? I don't know. I just feel like it's hard too because everyone in the group like doesn't like her. So I almost feel like, well, someone has to be like nice, yeah. you know? And I feel like we're still friends, but like even after the fact, I was still the one hitting her up and like, hey, how are you doing? Like she doesn't really hit me up, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think it's more just like I take my space But at what now. point is that? In my head, like we're cordial, but like when are we really going to hang out? Now she moved away too. So it's like, what What do I have to worry about? You know, you moved away. I'll yeah. always be that yeah. a re relationship has to reciprocate like what you put into mm -hmm. it and what you get. That's just a healthy relationship. Well, I'm not so putting it's not energy I... into it anymore is what I'm saying. Like I'm not going to put energy. You are in though, because when we're shit talking, you and... have to defend her. You feel yeah. a need to have to do well, that. Well, I feel bad. I don't know. Why though? Why? She doesn't feel bad. She doesn't, I, I doesn't feel bad. I can see Macy's point. I mean, listen, here's the thing. Like everyone's smashing her in the room. So I'm just trying to tell you like how she Yeah, but think of what she's done to everyone. She's not here. She's not here. She could have been. She's not defending Whitney. She's not justifying her action she's just kind of speaking for her though which i feel like if she wanted to tell her story she, she should have be been here. here that's I fair. Agree. if i were that's to try true. to make an argument in whitney's for whitney's defense because i feel like i know a lot of whitney's mm -hmm. uh, and i'm not usually a fan <laughs> of the whitney like i can't it's just like i can't be around you again it's just like vampire yeah. energy suckers it's mm -hmm. just like i don't honestly again don't we don't care. know whitney she could not again and i don't know whitney yeah. but like, yeah. but people who we remind don't. me of her <laughs> it's just that i think when whitney talks like she's the victim she believes it yes mm -hmm. and whether she's right or wrong the fact that she believes she's being wronged you know it's probably coming from some past trauma or yeah. whatever it is that's so her like reality. that's the, yeah that's her reality so that's where i think there's empathy to be had for whitney where i think there's a times where whitney can't figure out why everyone's against her yeah. or why mm -hmm. she you know i don't think she realizes maybe her 
delusion. Yeah. You I know? don't right. think she was well, ever... We, can, we all empathize with her. We've all been through traumatic yeah. things, but also Absolutely, I think yeah. it came to a point where we're like, I don't want to entertain this because it is energy sucking. Yeah. It takes a lot. Yeah. And well, that's just, where you, you guys, it seems yes. like you've distanced yourselves. You're yeah. like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm not going to fuck with this. And but any I, apology that she has made is, oh, well, I was manipulated, so I'm sorry <laughs> that I did I just don't feel you. like she was trying to be malicious is what I was going to say. I don't think yeah. she's purposely trying to be like, oh, like mean to anybody. I just think things she is just didn't play out the way. I think she's trying expecting. to have it her way. And the only way she wants to have it her way is doing it how she wants to be done. And then she'll just keep <laughs> She likes to be in it. control. Yeah. And she she admits that. As she, well, she did admit that eventually. I was like, you don't need yeah. to control the situations. Like, you just need to relax. And I think it's a fault that she did admit later that uh, she loves to be in control. Yeah. And when she's not in control, it's like hard for her. Good luck. Was really when, um, yeah. yeah. Did any of y'all reach out to her when she posted the TikTok dancing while her son was very sick? Oh, that was tough. Didn't know oh, her. we didn't know didn't her know at that her time. Didn't mm -hmm. know. No. Didn't know but I mean, we have been through countless conversations with her calming yeah. her down or supporting her. That was tough. It's yeah, very triggering for her, I will say. And she gets asked about it a lot now with press and stuff. And I will say, like, I do feel like people should give her grace because I'm like, y you're postpartum. Like, you know, you've had a baby. Like, you're not thinking straight. Like, she did something that she, like, heavily regretted later, but I don't, she didn't have bad intentions. Well, and also, we've all made mistakes on the internet. I mean, yeah, yeah for sure. That's too. what sucks. I mean, it's like you make one mistake or one yeah. post, and it's like your whole life is that what people know you for, which mm -hmm. is just so sad. I mean, it's like this entire, I'm sure Taylor's all yeah. she's getting asked about is the swingers and the arrest. Oh yeah. yeah. You know. Speaking yeah. of Taylor, where do you all stand with Taylor? We obviously talked with her last week. We, yeah. You know, it's a tough conversation. We had to address some very serious uh, situation. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it seems like you, all you women have have been willing to give her grace. Yep. And and so, okay. from our standpoint, I really respect people who at least try to, who yeah. attempt at making changes in their life. Yeah. And like we, you mm -hmm. know, we all make mistakes. But a lot yep. of people talk about being different. And talk about doing the work and she she doesn't talk like she's a finished product and she talks like she's yeah. actively trying yeah. and I, I give her a lot of credit for that. Is yeah. that how you all see it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. she's definitely honest. willing to apologize when she yeah. needs to and take accountability. Takes accountability, but she's who she is always. I yes. I respect the hell out of that. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Same person in every room. Yes. I love she's that. She's never agree. the victim. She's like, I did that. I messed up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm learning from it. I love Taylor. Yeah. Interesting. Good to hear. Michaela, you have been very open about your health struggles. Oh, yeah. I thought you were going to say Whitney. I was like, Damn. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> we were done with Whitney. We're done with Whitney. No, with your health struggles. What yes. is going on? Where are you now? You know, I don't even know. I haven't gotten any answers about it, and it's just been never ending. I've been kind of doing like my own holistic side of things. I'm on no gluten, no dairy, no sugar, no potatoes there's so like a whole bunch potatoes? of different how did it first <laughs> come out like, it was what? after i had my daughter and i got like weird allergies and rashes and then it started getting really severe i got breast implants and then it got really bad after that and then i went on a couple rounds of steroids and it seems like it just backfired each time until i i gained like 12 pounds of inflammation and water weight and i was covered head to toe my whole body was red and it was like there were days I literally couldn't even get up and walk because my knees were just cracked behind and it was it was horrible. And so in the beginning of 2024, I took out my breast implants and that helped a little bit. And then I had other things come up and then I went to Costa Rica and I took out all my mercury fillings. So I'm dealing with a whole bunch of mercury toxicity and I had an infected root canal oh that I God. took out. It was just a whole bunch of shit and I've gotten no answers at all. I've spent so much money in testing and different medications. I've been on like three different medications for eczema and stuff and it never worked so yeah it's really frustrating yeah that sucks and yeah. i'm assuming you'd want to bring awareness but you don't even know what to bring awareness <laughs> to exactly yeah. i'm like i have 10 different things i think it is and it's it's really nice to have a community on the internet that's like maybe it's this or like i get people sending me pictures all the time of stuff that they have and they're like i have this similar thing this is what worked for me um, it is like a blessing and a curse at the same time because yeah. it is I'm so frustrating. Her weird TikToks. I'm like, is it this? She's like, are you wearing cheap earrings? You might have a nickel <laughs> allergy. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's just a whole bunch of things, and it, it was really hard to go into filming. And do you I use mean, any cortisone cream? No, I'm I'm against steroids and cortisone, and people go through terrible withdrawals. And yes. it, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. I'm going as holistically as possible. Not to say like I've been on medications because I came to a point when I was filming when I was like I literally wanted to die. It was the worst thing ever. And so I wanted to get on medication for short periods of time. And so filming was so hard for me because that was like when I was basically at my worst or just getting over my worst. And so I had to go into filming every day, not looking like myself. It looked like I had went through chemo. I lost 
12 pounds after I got my implants taken out. And then all my eyebrows, you know, my eyebrows were falling out, my hair was falling out, and I just had no answers. So I had to go to filming. I was just crying every time I had to go film because I was like, I don't look like myself. I wasn't wearing makeup. I, I mean, I didn't look like myself at all. But she's you still beautiful. Stunning. Stunning. Yeah, you look yeah. Yeah. Still she's stunning. She's always beautiful. Wow. Yeah, I know. I Watching some that. clips of the thing, I'm like, it's really triggering. So I don't know if I'm going to watch all of it. But mm-hmm. I think it's important to bring awareness. And I mean, I grew up with eczema and I hate it. I always wore long sleeves and I was covering myself up always because I was so embarrassed. And I so, had as a kid. Yes, it's mm-hmm. horrible. It's like the worst thing. I wouldn't wish it on anyone. But I feel like going into filming, I was like, okay, I'm going to show up because I know that there's people out there. There's people who are going through something similar and they wake up every day and just hate looking in the mirror or hate having and dealing with it because it's not it's not only mentally exhausting. It was physically exhausting. Mm -hmm. It was I was in pain. Incredibly defeating. Yes. And I had three kids. I was taking care of my kids. I had to have my husband like take my kids to school and do all the routines. And so like my quality of life was so low because I was a mom. I was like, I can't do anything. Yeah. So so today you I mean, you look amazing. How, yeah. how do you feel? <laughs> it, it comes and goes. I feel yeah. like, well, my skin's still red. My rashes are going away, but like my skin's still really red and I, I'm still having a hard time regulating my body temperature. Like I'll get really hot and then I'll like go through like a period where I'm just like shivering for two hours and it's yeah, it's a lot. But definitely had improvements. Okay. So I'm hoping season two that my health is a lot better and I can come back the villain. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I have my confidence back. You're I like, can come, I'm actually I can paying chess. everyone. <laughs> yeah. She's like, it's actually been I'm me. Like, it's been me bitches. <laughs> Literally. I'm like, Whitney's not that smart. <laughs> Wanna address your season two whether you will be because um, um, we thought you're in New York. Oh, yeah. No, yeah, my yeah. husband still supports the show, believe it or not. Okay. He loves it. So you're, you're still a part of my yes, talk. Cause... Yes. And also, right. he was in on the show for a reason. Like, he saw it as a way to, like, monetize and grow my business. So even though you see the villain side of Zach, he actually is very, very supportive and wants me to do it. So, so is he in medical school in New York? Yes. He is. No, not in New York. No, not in New York. That changed last minute. Okay. Yeah. Um, Where's he yes. at medical school? Follow me. Yeah, <laughs> the she's like, follow me, and Jen Affleck. Keep it up. Oh yeah, and the uh, the Affleck of it all. Oh, Isn't that funny? Do, do they even know each other? They don't. Okay. Um, they will now. Yes, definitely. He has to. I, I know. Hoping he's for watching. a meet and greet. Yeah, I've talked to my publicist. He's just, like, yeah. Man, I'm your cousin. Yeah. I'm like, no, literally. no. We're trying to get him invited to the premiere. <laughs> no, seriously, we're working on it. I'm just kidding. No, what's so funny is I was named after J Lo. And JLo's name is Jennifer Lynn Lopez. My name's Jennifer Lynn Affleck. Affleck. <laughs> so I'm the last Jennifer Affleck standing. Thing. No, <laughs> quite literally. The last standing. <laughs> no, literally. Is that extra pressure? <laughs> <laughs> New JLo in town. <laughs> oh my God. I still die that video. She's like, what are you wearing? And she's like, Caparelli. I'm like, that's going to be me tonight. I'm like, Caparelli. <laughs> Caparelli. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. So what is being on this show, in this show, about to kind of take over what well, we hope yeah. for y'all. Uh, what does it all mean to you guys? I think I hope that other women can relate to us because we all are on different career paths, like within the same genre, right? But like we all are in different stages of our religion. What do I want to say? Yeah. Mormon religion. We're all on different stages and I want people to be able to relate and be like, okay, like I can be Mormon and I can also be like this girl. Like I don't have to be perfect. Like I don't have to completely leave if I don't want to. I can still be in the church and be like her and hopefully they can see our careers and be inspired and yes. our moms. Like and I like, can be a mom and still yeah. be a boss ass. We do all the yeah. things. Yeah. We're all breadwinners too. So just yes. that you can like have a career and also have kids and be married and be successful in your dreams and in your daily life. You know? Yeah. Because I think every single one of us have gone through a period with motherhood where I feel like every mom has gone through a period where they just lose themselves. Yeah. Especially because yeah. we all were moms at such a young age. So to lose yourself right when you're supposed to be finding yourself yeah. into motherhood, it's like I always say, like, people would ask me, what do you like to do? And I'm like, I don't know what I like to do. (laughs) I like to take take my kids kids to school. I don't know. (laughs) And so it's fun that we're all kind of finding our own. It's good to have hobbies and have friendships and businesses. So, yeah, Yeah. just finding ourselves. And And not to go back to the swinging, but is there like a swinging community in Salt Lake City? Oh, for sure. I've what, never apparently house? a certain like, gym, certain gym, people like a certain fitness now. Draper gym they moved or because everyone found them. So oh, they moved no. out of fitness. If you're yeah. wondering, they're trying to <laughs> remain. If you're gym now, you're I'm like, you did. You know what I'm talking about, this Jen. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, uh, Macy. How's baby mama doing? 
Oh, it's doing really good. It was such a grind getting it together for the launch because I was like, well, I've been working on it for two years, but I wanted to launch it on the show and trying to film a reality show and launch a business like in the time frame was like the most stressful thing in my life, especially when we got like last minute trips planned. Like we went to Vegas and the next day I had to launch my business. And so I was like, and I don't have any employees, right? It was like just me. Mm -hmm. I have a co-founder, but he's in Canada. So it was like literally just me and like trying to recruit my family to like help me. Yeah. Um. So it's been really good. But it's definitely a like grind going from like being an influencer to a physical product for sure. But everything's and great. Tell and tell the audience about about it. Yes. So Baby Mama is my natal nutrition business. I should have brought some. You should I didn't yeah. even think about it. So we have a fertility gummy, but it can also be for people who are not wanting to get pregnant because it helps with PMS. It helps with all the things. And then we have Prego Mama, so for pregnancy, but also all of our gummies have different ingredients that help with the specific stage of motherhood you're in. So we also have a postpartum gummy. So that one's specific. It helps with like milk supply and like water retention. So we all have like different things for your different stages. And they taste good. And they taste good. On top of being clean. Like I would vegan, throw up every free. time I took a prenatal because I don't know. And the texture of them were good. Really yeah, good I made her taste test them. Yeah. I also had Whitney taste test them. That's before they were so all friends. Did Whitney like it? When it was like a trio. Yeah, she did. She did like it. <laughs> Everyone she did. did like it. Even if she didn't like it, she's like, oh my God, Macy, this is the best thing I've ever eaten. You're so God, amazing. You really hate her. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's hard because like it was like a she trio. She was the most apology to me. I did. And it I've not like gotten it, it. It felt like your birthday got used for drama and you were yeah. really pissed about it. Yeah. Oh yeah, and that was, she was manipulated to be there so she's sorry that she came so i was like okay yeah anyways you're all adults you yes, all yeah, you all yeah. you all knew what was happening absolutely i don't know if anyone can says i got manipulated no. that's just no the old vet speaking uh there's some other famous housewives in salt lake city do you guys run into them at all i do a few of their hair yeah. you do some of their hair <laughs> yeah okay i've oh yeah you, the funny story so like two three years ago maybe i was looking at i own a hair salon I was looking at my security yeah. cameras and Jen Shaw was eating yes. pizza in my break room. Yeah. I was like, what? So I like ran over there and like got to meet her and stuff because someone was doing her hair. But um, I do the new one, Brittany, who's okay. going to be on. She's a friend of. I know Whitney really well. So, yeah. Have you guys run into Monica? I'm mm -hmm. friends with Monica. Yeah, I love her. She's a little firecracker, that feisty girl. Yeah. But we enjoyed getting to know Monica. Did, yeah. Yeah. Seems is fun. she on here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I haven't met any of them. I, don't think. I met one of them at an event, like an influencer event. Yeah. She announced which one it was, being so. pregnant on the show. Yes, really? I Unfortunately, saw that. Lost, uh, lost. Then she did. Yeah. Oh, no. That's so sad. Monica that was a did? big moment. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. so sad. And you guys weren't expecting it. No. <laughs> no, we're not. No. That's insane. Oh, no. Yeah. yeah. Layla, are you dating? I currently have a boyfriend, yes. Oh, yes. my gosh. I was kind of woman? newer. I was dating around for a while. I was kind of he scared is. of commitment, but... <laughs> is he? What? Yeah. He's Mormon. Yeah. He's yes, Mormon? he is, Ellie, yes, yes. Mm. Yes. He's, He's active. Good for you. Yeah, he has get married next season. Season. Is he worthy? Um, <laughs> never has drank, never <laughs> smoked. <laughs> so. I'm going to take you guys through a temple recommend interview right now. Is <laughs> no, that, is that mean... sacrilegious? What is that? Don't do that. <laughs> what is that? Tell me more. They're just questions. Worthiness questions. So when you're being recruited? No, no, no. Actually, you <laughs> wouldn't even know the questions because they're super long. Because you're not temple worth. I mean, you wouldn't know the questions. <laughs> you got, they got they got they they've changed. Yeah, they have changed, but it's just a it's a line of questions that you're asked like one on one with the bishop of the ward to you guys, see okay. if you're. Well, here's worthy. a question. Speaking of like sexism in the church, uh, something young men in the Mormon faith. Correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm just a bystander. But they go on a mission. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that, is that only two men? years? No, no women, women, too. women do it too. Women okay. are a year and a half, right? And then men are yeah. two years. Yep. Yeah. Didn't, is it still two years? Yeah. Doesn't sound oh, very equal. Okay. Does it? It's because they. <laughs> it's just like a weird, like, so no, 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 there's extra six oh, months. Yeah. They can their family now. That's right. Yeah. I think yep. it's so that the women can wait six months while their man's on their mission and then they can go on for the year and a half and then they meet up at the end. Is of that relatively <laughs> new? Have women always been able to? They have, yeah. but it's not oh, as, common. It's not as common. Like, I feel like it's more of an no. expectation for men. Like, you don't have to, but it's more expected of men and not as expected of women. Yeah. 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 And typically. then they do like elder missions too, right? Like, when people are in like their 60s, they'll go on like old couple missions to together yeah. mission oh. presidents yeah that's kind of cute, cute. Yeah. no fun. brett randomly brings that up like no once every other week i'm not kidding he's like i can't wait to serve a mission age, with you i'm Demi. like what <laughs> Demi, he i'm so yeah. bad he's two really? years away from that so I you better start that. thinking two of it years babe. away from that he's two years <laughs> right, Grandpa. you'll be 30 See, the, the age gap age gap jokes they <laughs> <laughs> they're everywhere we yeah. love him we love our grandpa i love and brett who's still growing their families 
trying my hand stuck under the bed <laughs> we've been trying for like four, four years just and just nothing kidding. yet so that's been a that was a oh, big no. storyline that i don't think made it no. No. in the show i mean brett literally jacked off into a cup oh. on camera good for him and oh, it oh, didn't oh, make it pop off yeah. they put pop a black off. box over <laughs> actually it. no we actually had sex which was even more awkward i should have just given i don't Andy, know why which, you did that i don't we were trying to make it normal it made sex weird for two months yeah why did i do never once did i have sex for him to jizz in a cup i was like what what are you where did you go? The room felt that kind even of like a, a hotel clinic? and we were like, let's just make this as normal as we can. Nothing about it was normal. There was paper on the table. There was like like cameras outside the door. It <laughs> was, was it like the paper that yeah, crumbles when you sit on it? So it's like I don't recommend. Yes. It didn't spice things up. That we sounds had to... hot. <laughs> that <laughs> sounds <laughs> sexy. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. But you're still trying and still keeping still the trying. faith. Yeah. yeah, we'll see. It's been four years. Hmm. So we'll see what happens. I'm going to be her surrogate at this point. I know. <laughs> just knock me up, baby. Or Jen. Jen we, or Layla. We've talked about it. I'm just Layla, you've had a tummy it, tuck. I won't put you through that. How's the church <laughs> feel about that? Surrogacy. What? I think it's just left up to... Or do you to, not give a fuck? Oh, yeah. no, I don't, they don't care. care. I don't care, but they also have taken a step back when it comes to like your relationship and like you growing a family. It's yeah. like whatever works for you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because we do IVF and there's no issues. We have two. I always say we have two babies in the freezer. I just think it's fun, you know. But we have two <laughs> embryos, so we might get pregnant hopefully soon. Maybe yeah. we'll, well see. Also, what is one of the commandments? It's uh, uh, we'll multiply and replenish the earth. So do you guys have like different commandments one. than the rest of us? No, I don't know. Is it the ten? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We have the <laughs> King James version of the Bible, which is a pretty standard in Christianity. The, the Saint Joseph. Right? Saint, Saint Joseph. Joe. The Saint, Saint Joseph. Little Joe. I'll never get over that. Well, any final thoughts before we let you ladies go? We can bring up Fruity Pebbles if we want, but we also don't have. No. To. <laughs> like, yeah, we'll save that for another no. time. Oh, no, we're here. We'll we'll bring that. That. It's a mystery. Is that, you don't have who did, to say. Who did they do that to? I don't know. That was Demi. I don't know. It was Demi. Do you not want to talk about it? It's something that I'm just going to keep the mystery going. Yeah. You should. Oh, yeah, yes. you should on that one, I think it's a, fair, it's a fair play. It's a good Absolutely. cereal. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I'll tell Nick, you afterwards. I, Nick is interested. Yeah. I was like, I was like, what the wait, fuck so is... What is Nick I, loves, loves cereal. <laughs> His favorite is Cocoa Pebbles. So oh, then you love Cocoa Pebbles. You want Cocoa Pebbles. You want Cocoa Pebbles. You want Cocoa Pebbles. Cocoa Pebbles it's gonna ruin you guys are nice. You guys are yes. nice. We are. It's gonna ruin the rest of your life. It's not as bad as you think, but no, I mean, it, it is. is. I'm sad. We no, are. It's still it traumatized is. to me. Oh, it was the most shocking thing I've ever heard. I will heard. never forget when you told us. Okay, no, well, same. I thought, you, and you already said this wasn't it, so I'm gonna go ahead and tell the world that I thought it was him, like, eating Fruity Pebbles. Out of her butt? No, that would be mild. No, that would be mild. Did she say that wasn't it? So it's worse. You can't say nothing. Okay, we'll let the people continue to miss you. I love an extra exhibitionist, so no judgment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I love that. Yeah, I love that. 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 I love Enjoy. We look forward to season two. Jen, we're going to keep you at your word because yeah. you're like, I'm done. <laughs> You'll yeah, see me there. Like, Just kidding. Yeah. Uh, good luck on the marriage. <laughs> uh, you're a good sport. But uh, yeah. I appreciate you answering our, our tough questions. And literally, ladies, you all seem great. Uh, honestly, thanks for Thank being so fun. And, and honestly, I think there's a lot of fascination with your culture and religion. And thanks for opening up the doors and, and, and giving us a little bit more of a glimpse into a, a very fascinating lifestyle <laughs> for sure yes thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So nice to meet you guys nice to meet you all. well thanks for listening guys don't forget to send in those questions at asknick at the for all things ask nick we'll see you back tomorrow bye Hey guys, if you loved what you listened to, make sure you hit that subscribe button below. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.